Maybe the one good thing about a noisy fan is you know when it's broken and you can avoid something like this. Good morning. I've spent the past couple of days collecting data and running a bunch of tests before trying to install a silent fan for the motherboards. Let's take a look at the temperature data I've collected. The test ran for about six hours and each time the temperature was given time to stabilize. We started out with just turning the printer on and adding a little bit heat to the heat bed. So heat bed is at 45 degrees and we see that the printer is stable at 40.5 degrees. With the heat bed turned up a little bit to 50 degrees, we see a little bit of increase in temperature inside the main board area. Then we increase the print bed to 60 degrees and the temperature rose to a peak of 43. I tried just quickly turning the extruder up to 55 degrees. Around 50 degrees, the main board fan will turn on. The fan was able to drop the temperature down to 32 degrees. Now running a test print. During printing, the drivers are getting a little bit warmer because the axis is moving. We ended up reaching a peak of about 47.5 degrees. With the cover taken off, we had an idle temperature of 32.8 degrees. With the print running and the fan off, the temperature goes up over 60 degrees. Once the fan turns on, we see the temperature gets under control again. Here I've just stuck a 12 volt fan inside the mess of cables. It's exhausting air from the drivers at the moment. It reaches a peak of 38.5 degrees. With the cover closed and the fan exhausting through one of the small vents, we only have a temperature of 50.8 degrees. So basically, as long as we have any active cooling, we're okay. I taped a 40 centimeter fan over the opposite vent so it didn't directly blow on the thermistor. It was able to keep the temperature stable at 41.5 degrees. I then took a smaller but faster fan and put it over the same vent and it stabilized at 38.5 degrees. With the printer down on the table and about a five millimeter gap under the fan, we see it prints at about 41.5 or 42 degrees. The main thing that these tests are showing is that the original configuration is really not optimal and almost anything that we do is going to improve the situation or at least give us the same results. We really have a lot of options of what we can do safely. For these tests I used this cable that I prepared here. It's just some header pins soldered to a wire and on this end I've got a connector terminal and the connector terminal can plug into a 12 volt power adapter and this easily just plugs into any fan. And it's a quick way to test a lot of fans without having to prepare and solder everything together. Also, I have this thermistor with the digital readout and I've rewired it. It was originally meant for a PC. I've rewired it to accept a USB 5 volt and I just plug it into a USB adapter and we can get a readout and you can see it quite easily changes And this thermistor I put inside the printer between the fins of the Y-axis stepper driver. So my idea is that I'm going to try to use these smaller fans here and I have a couple of them. If we put them like this, they will sit in between the centers of the stepper drivers and it seems like the best position to me. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to mask and cut a hole for this and then I'll just use hot glue to hold it down. It's a bit of a mess. Should be easy enough to clean up with a knife. This is cleaned up now, and I managed to get a press fit. And 
And I recommend that we cut this grill off because it's huge and just cutting this grill off will probably lower the noise and definitely it's going to increase the airflow. And the easiest way to do this is just with a pair of pliers or a pair of nippers like this. It can fit a 40 millimeter fan. So what I've done is I've also gone in here with the knife already and I've took the rim off the edges here and we can glue this in that position. And then what we're going to have is we're going to have two intake fans and one exhaust fan. If you don't have a hot glue gun already, then I really recommend you get a hot glue gun. Even a cheap one is okay for this type of thing. It's just super fast. And even if later you change and put some nicer glue or something, this can hold something in place for you in the meantime. And yeah, it strings a lot, but I don't think we need to care right now. So everything is in place now. And I've cleaned it up a little bit. To connect everything, I've got a PC fan splitter. It goes to a serial SATA connection. And then I've cut uh, from an old junk power supply a SATA connector. And then we'll just wire this up to the buck converter after. You could just directly wire everything, cut it and solder it together. But this way we don't have to ruin any of the fans if we want to reuse them in the future. The good thing about this case is that there's a lot of extra space inside. We can fit everything. Okay, so I've done a fair amount of work in cleaning up. And I've rearranged the wires a little bit higher to make room for the buck converter here. And this space from this edge over here should be left open so that you have room for the LCD panel. So everything should stay to this side. I've wired the inputs on the buck converter already with a fan connector. And now I'm going to do some tuning on the buck converter and then I will wire the outputs next. For tuning the buck converter, up here we have these empty headers and these are 24 volts. The label says 12 slash 24, but I've checked and they're all running 24 on mine. So check yours first. And it's easy to tune using these because there's no temperature control for the output. They're always on. So the output is now 18 volts. I need a driver. If you're too lazy to go and find a driver, a fingernail also works. I'll try about nine volts first and let's see what this sounds like. Okay, I just realized I was not recording audio. Okay, that's not bad. Not bad at all. What is it going to sound like if we have it near here? Not good. So this is the thing that we need to consider. Even a fan sounds silent when it's out in the open air. When we put it in a confined space, the acoustics is going to change completely. So what's reasonable now 
we have no obstruction. When we put it on the case, suddenly it's noisy again. But not a problem because I can feel the airflow is high. So I'm going to tune it again and we'll see what happens. Okay, so I've tuned it down. I've tuned it down a lot, but keep in mind these are 10,000 RPM fans and this is a 6,000 RPM fan. So we don't need that much. Uh, now it's at 4.5 volts, but I feel that this is still going to be a lot because we have a lot better layout of the fans now compared to the original. So before we close everything up, we need to take the old fan out and also clean up these wires here and clean up this cable here and down here, clean up these cables make some space, make everything nice and tidy so that the airflow is good. We want to have a clear path as much as possible from here to the exhaust that we just created. So I want to do a sound test now because afterwards when we connect it to the original header on the motherboard, the fan is always going to come on together with the hot end fan and it's going to make a lot of noise from the hot end fan so we won't be able to hear clearly what we've done. So let's turn it on now. And can you hear that? This is very acceptable. Uh, keep in mind, I have some extension here. I've got about one centimeter extra rubber on the bottom. So there's a little bit more gap and I recommend you put a little bit more gap both to silent the printer in general, like I showed in my last video, but also we should get a little bit more airflow underneath. It's better. So I will put the thermistor in and we'll do the print test and check the temperature now. All right, so now we're running the print. You can hear it, but keep in mind that this is probably almost 100% coming from the hot end now. Uh, we've got a temperature 43.8. It's pretty good. It's still lower at the moment compared to the stock fan. So I'm going to let this run for a while and then I'll come back later and check how it's doing. Okay, and we can see now that we've stabilized at about 47.5. I think that's just around where we were with the stock fan. So this is pretty successful in my opinion. And we'll take one final look at the fan layout. So after going through all of that, what I think is that this configuration is a really good idea. Uh, we should put right above the main board some fans. Uh, intake or exhaust, I'm not 100% sure. With the intake, definitely the stepper drivers are going to be cool. With the exhaust, maybe the area in general will be a little bit cooler. But either way, we will get a better performance if we put fans above then this fan here could be optional to give a little bit more airflow and encourage a rotational flow. Uh, I used these small fans. I don't really recommend these small fans. I think it's much better to go a little bit bigger and get something that's silent. Over here, 40 is the best because then we don't have to cut the hole bigger. So if you can find something quiet for a 40 millimeter fan over here, but I'll probably update this in the future after I change the hot end fans, because now the hot end fans are too loud, but I want to hear that this is really silent. Now, hopefully the next version I do, will get silent plus cooler than stock. And that will be very nice, I think. So I'll leave some links in the description. These fans are maybe difficult to find outside of Japan, but I'll try or I'll link to something similar. And next time we will have a little bit different video. So thank you for watching and see you again next time. Yeah.